In this 13th century manuscript illumination, the Benedictine monk Matthew Paris prostrates himself in front of the enthroned <coughs> queen of heaven who holds her divine child on her lap. Paris adopts a position that mutatis mutandis neatly echoes what I, words I now quote from an 18th century source. He plucked up his courage and invoked from afar the protection and patronage of Charles III, begging him to descend just a bit from the royal throne of his majesty and greatness. So runs in part the description of events different from what I want to set out now, but the language captures both the social hierarchies at play and the element of distance. In fact, the individual whom I just quoted was a student who lived in Rome, just as Giuseppe Vasi did, and both came to appeal to Charles III for protection and patronage. Vasi, from his home in the Palazzo Farnese, which you see in the uh, background of this detail of the panorama. Although Spanish royal agent Azara wrote on May 1st, 1766, that Vasi's panorama and book, quote, had obtained the widespread acceptance of the learned for their precision and effort, close quote, he went on to report, and I'm going to quote now for a while. So, quoting, Vasi had been summoned by the master of the sacred palace, who told him that the Cardinal Secretary of State had reprimanded him harshly because on pages 114 and 115 of his guidebook, he had allowed to be printed that the Piazza and Palazzo di Spagna are within the jurisdiction of his majesty, the King of Spain, and that it was necessary to suppress that expression and alter the folio in which it was found. Vasi accepted the order with resignation, yet nevertheless pointed to its inutility, for since most of the impressions were already in the hands of the public, it was impossible to retrieve them. Still, he gave his word that he would effect the desired change in the impressions that he still possessed. A few hours after this event, with Vasi away from his home, a papal agent appeared there and requested from the family a copy of the said book. The family, having no idea of what had recently taken place, innocently gave him the book. On the spot, this impression flew to the Quirinal Palace, and Vasi was summoned and treated as someone who had disobeyed the orders of the sovereign, that is, the pope. He pleaded his innocence but was not believed, and it was ordered that he immediately consign all remaining impressions so as to correct and change the passage that speaks of the jurisdiction of Spain. I would not molest your excellency with this report if it did not seem to me essential for two reasons. First, because at stake is a work that in one way or another is under the protection of the king our lord, since the work is dedicated to him with his consent. Second, because of our interest in maintaining a privilege of such luster to the crown as is the jurisdiction of the Palacio y Plaza de España. This court, Rome, recognizes that jurisdiction in thousands of instances, and the limits of the square are fixed within the common consent of the government of Rome. So now John Moore is speaking again. Um, you see the pages in question here from an impression of the 1763 first edition. This happens to be in the Getty Research Institute and here from an impression of the 1765 second edition, which I believe belonged to the old pretender in the British Library. And the next two details I'll show you come from this British Library impression. On page 114, an etched south-looking vignette depicts the Piazza di Spagna, the misnamed Spanish steps to the left, the Collegio di Propaganda Fide in the background, the Palazzo di Spagna to the right. Beginning at the bottom of the page and continuing to the very top of page 115, the controversial text reads, in part, 
I'll translate, the magnificent square, which is called of Spain, not only because of the palace of the ambassador of that monarch, but also because it is of the same monarch's jurisdiction, and because it's the most frequented um, and uh, inhabited by foreigners and illustrious travelers. Further along, under the rubric of number 97, a number correspondingly etched into the correct position in Vasi's panorama, we read glaringly incorrect information about the history and patronage of the Spanish steppes. But to return to the subject at hand, the area was incontrovertibly associated with Spain. In 1654, the Crown purchased a palace to provide a permanent residence, residence for its ambassadors to the Holy See. A painting ascribed to the Flemish-born Willem Reuter reports a festival held in front of that palace in 1662 to celebrate the birth of a Spanish Crown Prince. Among the motley crew assembled in the square, a man in the foreground holds a jug to his lips enjoying his share of the so-called liquors of Bacchus that according to a contemporary account poured, quote, in a most abundant richness, unquote, from a fountain at the base of the ephemeral festival structure. The large Falda map view of 1676 maintains a proper distinction between the Piazza Sotto la Santissima Trinità dei Monti and the Piazza di Spagna, but the strong Spanish presence often prevailed in Roman nomenclature, as we see in the Noli plan of 1748, which for all its bewitchingly detailed accuracy can do nothing to record the jurisdictional difficulties visited upon the papal authorities by the extraterritorial status of the Piazza di Spagna. These difficulties doubtless made it particularly unacceptable for officials to read in such matter of fact, even blasé terms, that the very capital of the that in the very capital of the papal states, an area that was to boot the most frequented and inhabited by foreigners, lay outside <laughs> the Pope's control. Even more embarrassing was that the censors charged with vetting both the 1763 original publication of the guidebook and its 1765 republication under a new title had failed to do due diligence. Here is the imprimatur page from the 1763 first edition. <coughs> On the screen now, you see a memorandum from the Quirinal Palace dated 18 June 1766. Redacted in the style typical of the papal court, the, memoran the memorandum mentions the, quote, inadvertence of the person charged with reviewing the book. Vasi was asked to consign all copies he still possessed and all copies still at the printer's shop, so as, quote, to correct them appropriately, as is the practice in similar cases. An 18th century archival di divider provides an abstract of important matters addressed in bundled papers that document relations between Rome and Spain in the year 1766. Some 50 documents in their own divider treat of, quote, the proceedings against the Abbe Vaz Vazi and elucidate how a book meant to, uh, meant to accompany an etched panorama of Rome became a diplomatic flashpoint. An autograph note by Vasi proves that Charles III decided to indemnify Vasi for losses the artist would otherwise have, have sustained by subtracting um, already printed books from the marketplace. And I quote from this text, translating, I, the undersigned, ha have received 72 scudi in cash for the cost of 144 libretti entitled Intice del Prospetto di Roma at the, co the cost of five paoli each in faith this day of 9 July 1766. And here, once again, you see parts of page 114 and 115 of Vasi's guidebook 
in which the Piazza di Spagna is controversially identified. Sent to Spain for examination was this galley. The publisher ran it through the printing press, but not the rolling press, for it was not the panoramic etched view of the southern Piazza di Spagna, but the words printed below that signaled change and required approval. Five unspeakable words, a di giurisdizione del medesimo, it's of the jurisdiction of the same monarch, seen in the first edition above, are replaced by the post office resides there. <laughs> the officials of the same. <laughs> a typographically deft removal of, re of reference to a foreign monarch's contested jurisdiction. On page 115, other alterations also enable typesetters to accommodate five lines of text rather than four. <laughs> <laughs>